Welcome back to Reddit Stories. I'm Shane. Today, I am joined by Tommy. And from the Two Hot Takes podcast, Morgan Absher is here. Hello. Man, ah. <laughs> I've been wanting this to happen for a while. This is really cool. I'm so excited. Yeah. You are more familiar with Reddit than uh, anyone here. No. You, I think you. You're halfway to 100, right? Uh, this is we're past 50 episodes, but I mean you you had to have gone through thousands of posts by now. Yeah, quite a few. Yeah, and you source all of the stories on your show. Yeah, I mean you came on, you saw it's kind of a, a one girl circus. Really impressive. Yeah, it's it's chaos. Yeah. Uh, Meanwhile, I'm reading these for the first time. I luckily don't have to scroll through all of Reddit. (laughs) Our production team over there, uh, they're skeletons right now. uh, After (laughs) through all of it, there's like. uh. (laughs) Um, But uh, I went on your show. It was a great time. Yeah. Um, So thank you for joining us here. I'm so excited. Yeah. Uh, Kind of a loose theme of just uh, goofy and wacky today. (laughs) Uh, Some silly stuff. That uh, came out of me. I don't think yeah. I chose to do that. Uh, <laughs> Just happened. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's let's get into this. Do it. All right. I like it. First one up. This comes from relationship advice. Uh, this is from 2018. So this is a little bit a little bit of an older one. Vintage. Found out husband is the one stealing shallots from neighborhood gardens. Okay. All right. Oh. Already kind of a fan. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. This has been going on for several years. I live in a small rural neighborhood with an HOA where the houses are spread apart, but neighbors are expected to keep their houses and yards nice. As with most HOAs, some members can get a little carried away with the seriousness of it all. There will be passive aggressive emails about escaped dogs, shirtless runners, unsightly fencing, etc. It really annoys my husband. I just laugh at it. Well, a few years ago, the neighbors got together and made a community garden in the center lot. There were a lot of emails sent about this, a lot of drama. I don't remember all of it, but people would get upset if someone took up too much space with their plants, planted something unsightly, etc. So then we start getting emails complaining that someone was picking all the shallots slash onions out of the garden. Some people thought it could be deer eating them. There were several theories. The next year, the same thing happened. And then people were also complaining that the onions slash shallots were going missing from their personal gardens. This year, it started happening again, and people flipped out. All caps emails, demands to interrogate teenage residents, requests to put security cameras in the communal garden. Two houses were hit, and then people started staking out in their gardens and putting up game cameras. It started out being funny because I'm not involved with gardening, so it was just amusing to read all the emails. But this year, people are getting really upset and wanting to get law enforcement involved. So anyway, you already know what happens. I walk down the bottom of our property that I don't visit often, and I find a lot of smashed onions and shallots. Like, absolutely smashed to bits. It clearly took a lot of work. I went inside and told my husband jokingly, I think we're being framed for the onion heist. He got this really weird look on his face, and I had the realization and asked him if he didn't have anything to do with this. He confessed to me that he did and had been stealing the onions and shallots to spite the neighbors. He was sneaking out at night to do this. I asked him why, and he said he just hates them so much. Oh my God. I love that. I don't even know. This makes me really uncomfortable. The man is 31 and sneaking out at night to steal onions, and I didn't even notice. Why wouldn't he just tell me? Like, this has been going on for three years. It's not like he just did it once as a prank. I don't know what to do. Can anyone help me think this through? Maybe I'm overreacting, but I'm pretty upset. I'm... Okay, that took a turn, and I'm really upset about this, too, because I was expecting her to be like, yeah, these onions have been missing, and meanwhile, my husband's steaks that he makes are just incredible. Like, or just like the stews he's been making, ugh. The house always smells so good. (laughs) Yeah. Mm, Fragrance. What the I'm mad. I hate when people are just petty and wasteful. Like, you're stealing food from people just out of spite for three years. That's crazy. That's, that's wild. That's insane. It's a lot of work. Yeah. He's so like, much he's, work. He's like Batman, except evil. Yeah. Just, There's more psychologically crazy ways to spite your neighbors that yeah. doesn't waste food. Uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I'm like. Especially in HOA. I mean, H- oh, yeah. HOAs have far too much power, I will yeah. say. Like, they're a little unhinged, but. I mean, there's other ways he could have done it yeah. versus like stealing food from people that they're putting hard work into gardening. Like, I had a garden with my grandma. That is not easy. No. Yeah. Like, I love gardening. Ugh. And I love onions and shallots. 
no, this this hurts. Which one do you like more? Uh, it depends on what you're making. <sighs> okay. It really depends. If you're cooking a steak, a shallot is really great with that. Um, and shallots are good for some things, but it depends on the onions too. Yeah. Are these red onions? These yellow onions? White onions? They're all used for different purposes. Yeah. yeah. You sound like a little chef over there. Well, Aww, a little chef. I've been hanging out with Trevor. Aww. Yes, chef. Um, uh, I just love that she asked, like, what, why are you doing this? And he's just like, like I'm filled with hate. I'm, I'm filled with hate. I'm an angry man. <laughs> you need to get this guy a hobby. <laughs> Dude, seriously, he teach needs, him how to cook. He needs a hobby. Well, but what do you do? Like, besides chain him up at night? Like, what, what, <laughs> like what do werewolf. you do? Like, I mean, you get to that point where it's like, this isn't divorce worthy. This isn't like, right. it's not that serious. But it's like, okay, like, honey, like, like, they got game cams now. <laughs> like, they're going to get you eventually. Yeah. Get him an <laughs> onion costume. Ooh. He can be like the onion man. And now he's gonna deliver onions to everybody. <laughs> this is how we make it he up. He has to, to pay them all back. Mm -hmm. Retribution. Yeah. I, I could get behind that. Right? Deliver that onions. That seems fair. <laughs> Honey, I found an onion under my pillow again. Uh, I hate this. Um, they, they could, they, the, the neighborhood could have found him if they all got together and they're like, everyone was like all sitting around and then they put an onion in the middle. See who the, smashes and it. And then the husband's just like, ah! and he just like goes out there with a mallet. Uh, this is hilarious. Um, some comments here. Here's what you do. You cover that evidence up ASAP. You're his wife, and sorry, but you know where the onions are buried, and you need to make sure there's no evidence left. Hurry. If they are that pissed, they will eventually find out. After that, you need to talk to him about how people now have, con have cameras, and I bet you there's at least one person who hasn't told anyone they put theirs up. He can get caught now. He needs to put his bad boy ways aside and cool it for a bit. <laughs> But, but a photo of him on a game cam stealing onions is so funny. It's really hilarious. Funny. That's so funny. Like a Sasquatch literally just like. <laughs> oh great. my god! I think he could have a career as a PI though. Like these are valuable skills that he's, yeah. he's yeah. attuned mm -hmm. at this point. Three years and not getting caught. He's you know. He needs to level up to stealing diamonds at this stage. I right. mean, you know, if you're gonna steal things, do it well, right? Yeah. Uh, someone else said, dress can be a really dangerous thing. Some people drink, some are abusive under stress. Your husband is harmlessly facetious and kept you consistently entertained for three years without you knowing. I'd consider you blessed. Uh, that has 4,000 upvotes. Oh <laughs> so a lot of people see it that way too. Uh, oh. Yeah, I wonder what happened. There's no update on this, but he does have to stop or he's gonna get caught. Yeah. Uh. You it's, could probably get sued. Oh, what? I feel like you can sue for anything these days. I don't know That's anything. True. I don't anything. know. I don't know anything about uh, community gardens. I don't know the the laws regarding them. Yeah. But at the very least, he will be shunned by this neighborhood. Yeah. If it is a community garden, yes, it's couldn't he take the onions because he's part of the community? My understanding of community gardens, though, is that it's a community space, but mm -hmm. you plant your own. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I would. That I wouldn't. Ta I wouldn't take someone else. Like someone else grows an onion. I'm not going to take it. But he went to private gardens too. Right. No. That's also, he, I know that. Yeah. He, I know that part of the crime. He got too yeah. greedy. He yeah. Got, he got too, too greedy. Too much. I just can't believe he smashed the onions. That's that, that's the that's the part that I'm like, you know, it got it went to waste for three years. Or donate to a food shelf or something. So many ways. There's he so done many this. better ways. Bloom so an onion. Oh. Oh. Come on. Come on. I know. Anyways, moving on. Hell yeah. Uh, this comes from our confession. Um, this is from last year. I made fake throw up to stay home from school when I was 11. Awesome. This isn't some big juicy confession, just something I did that's funny to me because I just remembered it and have told no one. When I was 11, I was going to this private school and hated it, got bullied and all that shit. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I literally would cry to my mom saying I didn't wanna go and she let me stay home, stay home a lot, but finally she said I couldn't stay home anymore. So one night I decided to fake sick because she wouldn't just let, let me not go for no reason. Apparently faking that I got sick in the toilet and flushed it wasn't believable enough, so I had the idea to make my own. It was about 11 p.m. Mom and dad were dead asleep. I went to the kitchen and remembered getting milk, salsa, different kinds of chips, juice, and maybe some cheese or something. Anyway, I crushed up the chips, mixed it all up in a bowl, and put it in the microwave for like one minute. I proceeded to my bedroom and poured it all on the carpet. It didn't smell as bad as actual throw up wood, but I had to hurry so I put on my fake sick face and voice and went to my mom's room, told her made her come to my room to see the masterpiece, and she just looked at it with no reaction. She was genuinely unfazed. She wasn't comforting me like she usually would. She also has a very weak stomach and didn't gag at all, just had no emotion. <laughs> she said, okay, clean this up and go back to bed. 
<laughs> and walked back to her room. I was low-key disappointed because that's really how you're going to act to my hard work, LMAO. Anyway, next morning she woke me up for school and I laid in bed until she came back again and said something like, do you remember I got sick last night? I still don't feel good. And she literally just said, yeah, just stay home. Nothing else. No, hope you feel better. No, let me take your temperature. No, you're going to the doctor like usual. Thinking back on it, she 100% knew it was fake and it's low key embarrassing. Maybe she saw the effort and was like, okay, she really doesn't want to go. To this day, I have no idea what possessed me to make fake throw up. Really unnecessary. Anyway, that's all. Sorry if it was lame. I just never told anyone. <laughs> it's been eating them alive <laughs> for years. Oh, God. Just, guys, I have to tell you. I have to get this out. Yeah, I feel like a parent would probably have seen so much throw up by that point that they're like, that's not. I know what this looks like. You yeah. can tell what throw up is versus some wet chips on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think there's still a wrapper. In it. <laughs> it's like, okay, did you eat that? Salsa chunks. <laughs> oh, mom, I threw up and it smell so good. <laughs> Go grab another chip, just dip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Damn. Uh, did you guys ever pull any shit like this to try to get out of school? I was notorious for not going to school. I, okay. in eighth grade, actually missed 241 class periods. That's wow. awesome. Yeah. My dad called the secretary and got to a point where he was like, I'm just going to call you when she's actually coming to school. Oh. Wow. It was pretty bad. Oh. But I, I made it. Yeah. yeah I did. But we made it. I made it. You know, you I ended up doing okay. But yeah, I hated school. Oh, hated wow. school. Yeah. Yeah, I was. You just person. didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. I then got bullied really bad. So like, I get it. Like, it's it's not enjoyable. But then it's like, well, what do you do when you have a kid in this? It's kind of you switch schools or you know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It's a kind of an ordeal to like it figure is. out what to do with your kid if the school isn't right for them. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Uh, I definitely uh, tried to pull some stuff. I never went that far. Also, screw him for doing it on a carpet. If I was a mom, yeah. I'd be like, on the carpet, Billy. Or wh whoever it was. Yeah, do it um, in a sink. Do it in a sink. Or the toilet. Have, do it in the toilet. Just be like, Mom, look. Yeah. Literally. You didn't they, believe me before. They, don't, look. Don't have to microwave the chips if the toilet's wet. Yeah. What was anyway. up with the microwave? I don't know. I think like, I wanted to, like, really get it ooh. together. Fix yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, some comments here. Yeah, she knew you faked it, but she also realized how badly you hated school, so she let you stay home. Right. Don't be embarrassed. No one should have to put up with bullying. Uh, someone else said, yeah, she knew she hadn't fed you all those things in the past six hours. Real vomit would have looked like whatever you had for dinner. Uh, lastly, someone said, you're the Picasso of fake vomit ar artistry. If only mom had given it the standing ovation it deserved. Opier said, I know, literally ignored it. Um, she I was don't... at her wits end. I know, she was she's just, just like, stay over home. This. Yeah. She's like, oh my God, again. Um, I never faked sick, but... Um, I didn't. I wasn't someone who loved school or hated school. It's kind of an in-between. But uh, I got out of it by becoming a child actor. And oh, yeah. I did, that's I, what I, I should have done. Guys, you should you get on iCarly. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> then you never have to go to school yeah, ever again. God. Mom, I don't want to go to school. I'm on iCarly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't go to school today. Uh, I'm an actor. Meanwhile, I'm in college online and yeah. <laughs> convincing myself. I messed up. We messed we up. We messed up. We should have been... Yeah. We all ended up here. That's true. <laughs> that is true. We all ended up in the same place. I don't know what oh, to tell you. That's we all ended up reading Reddit here. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> okay, moving on. Okay, hold on. I'm our sorry. Per, our, uh, our producers have written into this. Uh, for our audience, don't be eating right now. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Just a fair warning. Today I f***ed up by using the bathroom after a hot girl. <sighs> yeah, I know okay. where this is going. Yeah. So today I was eating lunch at this bomb-ass Mexican restaurant okay. in my area. Oh, no. I absolutely love their food, and they serve their chips with the enchilada sauce on top with melted cheese. Good laud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good laud. <laughs> Anyways, I get up to use the bathroom, which is only a one-person unisex bathroom with a wooden door. I'm standing behind, waiting for my turn, and up behind me walks a hot girl. Being a gentleman, I naturally let her cut in front of me. At no point in time was I hitting on her or was I expecting anything in return, simply trying to be a gentleman. However, I will note that she was pretty attractive. The person walks out, and then she goes in. 
A few moments later, she quietly walks out, smiles at me as if she's thanking me, and then I go in. Good God, Father, Almighty, makers of heaven and earth, I completely fell to the ground. The smell was absolutely horrific and could best be described as soggy saltwater sand mixed with rancid meat. Oh. I immediately started to gag and breathe through my mouth. This only made it worse because I started to taste the smell, mm. which only made me more sick. Mm -hmm. Then I look in the toilet to see the crime scene. She didn't even flush the toilet. That's cool. No. It was like <laughs> accidentally clicking on the worst not safe for work picture in a sleazy underground unmoderated forum or clicking open uh, the mysterious AVI file you downloaded from LimeWire back in the 2000s. I kid you not that by this time, I was having trouble keeping my eyes open as I flushed the toilet. My mouth began to water uh. as I gagged and dry heaved. I'm over two years sober and haven't felt that feeling since I quit drinking alcohol. I threw my hand over my mouth as my delicious food started to come out and expanded my cheeks like two balloons. <laughs> <laughs> I empty the contents into the toilet, flush, unlike Miss Manners' school dropout, and bolt out the door. I go up to the restaurant staff and pull an Ace Ventura shouting, do not go in there. <laughs> Of course, then, I think that they're going to think it was me, so I tell them that I swear it wasn't me, followed by demanding that someone empty a bottle of Febreze or air freshener in the bathroom. Miss Chernobyl butt was gone by this point. I also learned today that something small, innocent looking, and pretty is capable of making the worst smell ever created in mankind. Typing this, I still have remnants of the lingering smell in my nose, and when I got home, I threw all of my clothes in the washer and took a hot shower. Uh, yeah, damn. Wow. Wow. Author. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah, he really, really, uh, really, uh, painted the picture. Expanded on that. Yeah. I have, I have no gaps, visually, mentally, like, oh, yeah. we're full. Wow. <laughs> we, we know everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. Too much. Um, too much. Yeah, you never can underestimate anyone in this world. No, and there's hot girl IBS. Like, yeah. you, you shoulda known, you mm. shoulda known. Don't mm. let a hot girl cut in line before you. But, yeah. I, you know, I'll give her a pass for the stomach issues, but the not flushing. Yeah, that's always mind blowing to yeah. me. It must've been such an insane experience for her that she like blacked out and came oh, she was like tripping. Stumbled Sweating. out. She didn't yeah. even realize what had just happened. Yeah. yeah. So, but maybe. she did smile. She did smile. <laughs> Which like. Shyly, she was just like, man, nah, yeah. I don't have that much trust in toilets. Even if it's automatic, oh, yeah. I, I do not trust them. No. I'm not gonna embarrass no. myself, especially a single bathroom. No, yeah. Come on, just courtesy look. It's just reflex by this point. Yeah. Um, and even though it's reflex, I flush, I make sure it's. it's yeah, you gotta uh, check. Then, but then I still, I still have the thing, it's like a garage door where you leave and you're like, I did do that. Like, yeah. Did I, right? I did? Oh, yeah. especially okay. in my own home. I'm like, yeah. Is, is there anything mellowing in there? Or did I? <laughs> I'm like, sure, use the bathroom. And I'm like, wait. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, also, um, this guy, like, he's like, wow, now I learn that hot girls, shit. It's like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're a bunch of bags and straws. It doesn't matter what your outside looks like. You're going to shit. It's going to be yeah. shit. I, OK, this is just me. If I was in this situation, mm -hmm. I, I don't let people, if I'm in line for the bathroom, I'm not letting someone hop in front of me. Unless they come up and they're like, please, please for the love of God, yeah. and I'm not in that same situation. But if she, if someone just walks up, I'm not gonna be like, oh, you go in front of me. No. Right. I, I think I wouldn't trust someone if they said that. If I walk up and they're like, oh, you hop in front of me, I'd be like, What's why? In there? Why? <laughs> What's yeah. in there? What do you oh. know that I don't know? No, you go first. Something's wrong. <laughs> There's like a jack in the box like spring ready to get. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah. What's happening in there? Uh, a couple comments. If she had flushed, it might have been worse. FYI, the staff assumes you did it. Someone replied, <laughs> I read his story and I still think he did it. <laughs> someone else said, OP just mad his crush asserted dominance. Hell Lastly, yeah. someone said, plot twist, it was the dude before her. LOL. Mm. I that is a theory. If she was just going in there not to use the bathroom, just to like I don't know, anything else then, but I don't know. I feel like she would have warned them. Oh like a yeah. courtesy warn, like, if hey. If it wasn't, I, yeah. Uh, I just went in here and maybe you should go next door. Like, it's really bad. Cause I clogged a toilet on a trip recently. This is so brave of you to oh, I know, God. I know. <laughs> I was in London, it was Notting Hill. There's no public bathrooms. I, you know, you have the second coffee and you start sweating. 
Everyone's been there. And I go to this this restaurant. Everyone's been to Notting Hill. No, like, <laughs> no, the, the poop sweats. I know, like, I know, I know. Ugh. And so I like I run in and I'm like, hey, can I get a table? Like, yeah, oh, it's gonna be a bit. Okay, where's the bathroom? Run downstairs, single stalls. Men's, women's, okay. So I go to the bathroom. I not only run out of toilet paper, or so I think, there's some behind me, but um, yeah, it's clogged. 10 flushes and it's not going anywhere. And there's girls knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. I have to finally open the door and I go, I am so sorry, girls. Like, this toilet's not flushing. I'm just trying to like make sure it's it's good before you get in here. And you know, I, I do get it, it mostly good, but there, it just, it was an old wonky toilet and there was only so much I can do. And I ran, I did not I did not get anything in that restaurant. I ran out. I was like, these girls can't see me. I was checking the back of my coat for poop on it. Like it was, oh. it was horrendous. It was the worst experience I've had with a bathroom in quite some time. You, you still did your civic duty of trying. Though. I tried. You know, that's what's important. It's I like really a doctor did. tries to save a life. Oh. You know, that's, you're a doctor. Yeah. I am a doctor actually. Yeah. No, like, actually. <laughs> actually. You're actually a doctor. Yeah, I'm yeah. a doctorate in occupational therapy. And not in Reddit. No. It's crazy. We should create that, though. We, yeah. we could partner on a course. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah my, oh my god, I'm in class bachelor, right now. With my bachelor's degree, <laughs> where I can really help out. Can I be your first student? Yeah. Oh! Okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, this one comes from legal advice, so we are of no use. <laughs> not um, lawyers. Here we go. Uh, this is in Oregon. I accidentally created an army of crow bodyguards. Am I liable if my murder attempts murder? Oh, that's um, fun. So yeah. I think this is Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> <laughs> to make a long story short, I'm a late 20 something living in Portland, Oregon. I had a pretty intense emo slash goth phase as a tween that I thought I had grown out of. A couple months ago, I was watching a nature program on our local station about crows. The program mentioned that if you feed and befriend them, crows will bring you small gifts. My emo phase came back full force and I figured that I was furloughed and had lots of time, so why not make some crow friends? My plan worked a little too well and the resident five crows in my neighborhood have turned into an army 15 strong. At first, my neighbors didn't mind and enjoyed it. They're, mo they're mostly elderly, and most were in a bird watching club anyway. They thought the fact that I had crows following <laughs> me around wherever I went outside was funny. Lately, the crows have started defending me. My, oh. my neighbor came over for a socially distanced chat, me on the porch, her in my yard, and the crows started dive bombing her. They would not stop until she left my yard. They didn't make physical contact with her, but they got very close. Am I liable if these crows injure someone since I fed them? I obviously can't control the crows. I would rather them not attack my neighbors, but since I technically created this nuisance, could I be financially on the hook for any injuries? To be clear, they're not aggressive 100% of the time. If just the neighbors are out there friendly, normal crows, they only get aggressive when someone gets close to me or my property. Um, uh, TLDR, I have turned into Moira Rose, queen of the crows. My inadvertent crow army has gotten aggressive towards others. If they hurt someone, could I be held liable? Also, uh, I did not train these birds to attack. Also, thank you all for your awards. I'm glad my stupid decisions bring you joy. Please consider <laughs> donating that money to your local uh, Autobahn Society instead. Um, wow. Well, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't no. give that advice, but I am a fan of crows, and I think yeah. that's awesome, and I will say, during lockdown, I attempted the same exact thing. <gasps> you did? I would go to the I would go to the park with uh, like uh, blueberries in my pocket. I'm not kidding. I would go oh to this. I would walk. God. This I, is the most wholesome thing. I would I've walk ever to said. this. No, it was like my it was like my lockdown goal. I love this. Um, view. I I would walk to this park and I would read and stuff and I I brought blueberries with me and I was like, okay, I'm gonna and they just they were just always perfectly not there whenever I went. But Aww. I knew. But there was one time and I I threw a blueberry to one of these crows, it ate it, flew away, and then like 20 minutes later it showed up again. I was like, I was like, oh sweet, like I'm gonna get I'm gonna start getting this. Yeah. It just never fully panned out. Mm. But I that's that's this is truly one of my dreams. I, I wanna try. I'm not kidding. I would I, I I would love this so much if I could have like crow friends that brought me stuff and why haven't you actively kept up with this? Well now I, there's just not a place nearby me currently where I could like I, where it could happen, you know, it's right. tough. Yeah. Um, it's tough in the city too. Yeah. Like, you know, it's it's a little too like in front of other people trying to do it. Like, You're I, if I lived, if I lived in, I need a, 
A little bit. Um, I want to do this in secret so that nobody knows that I have crow friends. Well, and then you can use it to your advantage, right? Exactly. No, I, I want to live like I want to live up in the mountains, befriend all the crows there and all the woodland creatures. Yeah. Okay, and Disney Snow White. That's basically. hey, uh -huh. look, a man can dream. Yeah. <laughs> all right. But yeah, they, they bring you stuff. Some people train crows to bring them money. So I'm gonna do this, actually. Okay. I'm, I think your problem was the blueberries. I hear they like peanuts more. I tried almonds Nuts? that they, they didn't, they didn't like almonds. No. But uh, the blueberries worked. Okay. The one time. The one time. They, they had the blueberries. Yeah, I wanna do this. I, um, I want them to bring me like gifts, like jewelry they find on the street, maybe some mm. coins for a parking meter. Like, I, I'm with you, I want this. I want it so bad. I think they like shiny things, mm -hmm. if I recall. They're, yes. like, they're like, oh, he'd like this shiny thing. Here you go. Yeah. 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 They understand us. Yeah. They're so smart. They're super they're so smart. smart. Have you seen them do puzzles? Yes. Yeah, and they use tools. They also are good yeah, at- Yeah, um, they know how to use and tools. And they hold grudges. They do. I growl and bow. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't yeah, they talk. <laughs> I don't think this person would uh, be found legally. I don't viable. think so. I'm not a lawyer, but I do have an op an, an opinion for no reason. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't I don't think so because it's like you the can't wild animals. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. One time I was walking through a park and um, this was in college and this has nothing to do with anything, <laughs> but it is. It, it did. I was through a park and uh, I saw this guy. And... <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was a squirrel, and I was like, oh my god, what if I could like make friends with the squirrel? And so I went like, like, or like I made some kind of sound, and then within, I would say, 20 seconds, about 15 to 25 squirrels yeah. came down, and they were all like, oh, dude. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna get killed by squirrels. Uh, uh, yeah. So you can't do it to squirrels, but you can do it to crows. There was a squirrel, right. there was a squirrel that I would, uh, I would see often, uh, this was forever ago. I also have a squirrel story. Right. Uh, <laughs> most Reddit, most of these episodes, I don't have a story to share. Like, but I'm just like, for the, some reason, this one, I'm like, oh, I got a squirrel story too. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, but there was a squirrel that would that would like show up, and it was just a super friendly squirrel. And one day, I was just like, I didn't have anything on me, and I wish I did. If I'd had like some nuts or something, but it got super close, and I just kind of like reached out my hand. I was just like, I was just like possessed to like be like, can I? Can the, will this squirrel run up my arm or something? But I think the squirrel was like expecting me to have something. And it, it walks up to my hand, it like grabs my hand. <gasps> and then it was just, it like grabbed one of my, my fingers. It was just like, how? <laughs> put it in its mouth. And I was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, am I gonna get rabies? But it, it didn't like bite down. It, just, it was just like, what is this? It, it literally just went like, huh? A soft <laughs> nibble. Yeah, it was very sweet, but. You like, are Snow White. Right? Oh, no. yeah. Wow. We're in the presence yeah. of royalty. That's crazy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Some comments here. They are resource guarding. To stop them from attacking people, ask guests to bring shiny objects or food scraps to the murder of crows as an offering. You could also supply your guests little baggies of treats for them to offer up. If they dive bomb someone, don't give them food for 24 hours. If they are nice to a guest, give them a high value treat to reinforce positive behavior. Advice from my partner, she was a field biologist that is published in biology slash ornithology. 21,000 upvotes. Okay. Okay. Literal crow scientist. Right. Yeah. Um, someone said, it would take quite a stretch for someone to make a winning case that you were negligent by feeding the crows that you're feeding, uh, feeding the crows and that you're feeding the crows was the cause of whatever injury occurred. Right. A stretch doesn't mean impossible though. Make sure your homeowner's insurance is up to date. <laughs> so funny. 5,000 oh votes. Uh, someone said, this is my favorite thing I've read in my entire life. You'd be more, uh, no more legally liable for feeding a stray dog that happened to be get dangerously close to random bypassers. Mm. I true. just think they should put a throne out on their front, front yeah. porch and they should be there. And then if people walk up, it's like, what is your offering? <laughs> <laughs> Feed my crows. <laughs> Very well, you may approach. <laughs> like a crow lands and she's like, he's okay. You can let him through. <laughs> yes, yes, very good. Uh, oh, that's my dream. <laughs> it is gonna happen for you. That's all I, I want believe it. I in believe life. It. I, I see this, yeah. yeah. I see that's all I want in life. All right, well that was a really fun one. Let's move on to this next story. Oh God. This comes from True Off My Chest. I just exposed my nether region to a bunch of moms at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh. <laughs> Wow. There for my daughter's fifth birthday party. I am standing there with a soda in my hand talking to a small group of other parents, all women, and my oldest, seven years old with poor choice making and in impulse control, comes up behind me and yanks my pants and underwear down around my ankles. 
Everyone behind me saw my bare white butt cheeks. Every mom in front got a clear view of my dick and balls. I recovered as best as I could, but had to have cake and pizza with these people before leaving. Nothing could have prepared me (laughs) for this. Well, that's that story. Oh, wow. Wow. No, party's over. We're not doing cake. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Done. I, I I don't know what I would do. I'd probably have to leave. I'd, I'd leave. I'd leave. Yeah, I'd leave. Yeah, yeah I'd, leave. <laughs> I'd leave. All right, I'm going to get out of here. That is by far the worst place that's that could not, happen. I don't know where else. <laughs> yeah, the worst. That, yeah, I don't know where else you could have had that happen and not be that bad. Yeah. yeah. I wear a belt at all times. Uh, and I, I not, not that I assume this is ever going to happen, but like... <laughs> I don't. I don't know. After after middle school, like you just, I you know, because that's the thing that was, pantsing. Pantsing was b- oh, popular they at were my middle school. Ruthless. And since then, it never happened. Well, actually, I think there were some attempts on me, but uh, I, I remember ever since then, I've just always been someone I like secure pants. Yeah. So no one could ever do that to me. That sucks. Yeah, that's rough. And I don't know how they got to the ankles so fast too. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like, how loose were these pants? I, yeah. Um, Shoot. Yeah. I wonder is I wonder if this is his seven year old's first time doing this, or if this is like something he does. I you feel. Wonder. I feel yeah. like if he did it often, you would take precaution. You would know. Yeah. You would know. Yeah. It seems like it could have came without warning. Yeah, without warning. Yeah, this was a yeah. surprise. It's his first no. rodeo. Yeah. But luckily, it's luckily, his first rodeo. luckily, it sounds like everybody there understood that yeah. it was right. not his fault. Yeah. And it was all. You fun. live and you learn. Yeah. Uh, some comments here. So, Dad, are you going to have a chat with your seven-year-old about what we do and don't do to others? It will be a lot worse if he starts doing it in school. That is true. Yep. Yeah, nip it in the bud. Yep. Uh, I am sure it was mortifying, but as a former employee, that incident wouldn't matter or be too memorable as they are just happy it is nothing gross to clean up or having to call the cops. Okay. No idea. Also, I'm sure most of the people you were with will forget soon, too. Also, that place is crazy. Most people were probably focused on something else. Um, lastly, someone said, this story sounds like a great plot to a birth control commercial. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. 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 Moving on. All right. Quick heads up. Sexually explicit story. All right. Today I fucked up by ruining sexy time because I was thinking about SpongeBob. Oh, no. Greetings. Actually, not today, but a few days ago. My girlfriend, who's 27, and I, 28-year-old man, were having some quality alone time together, which has gotten pretty rare since we have a one-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. We decided to use the opportunity to have some sexy time and started out with some foreplay. We were making out and things got spicy. I was hard as a rock and ready to make my ancestors proud. So This guy has a fedora on, for sure. (laughs) Oh, yeah. At this point, I need to mention that I thought it was fun to get high beforehand as sex feels much more intense then. I got higher than intended and due to that, my tongue felt like a dry piece of beef jerky. (laughs) Have you ever woken up in the middle of the night because you were so thirsty and eager to get that cold, fresh 3 a.m. sip of water? That kind of dry. Nevertheless, I pull off my clothes and leaned in for a final tongue kiss before working my way down, down on her. Then it happened. When the tips of our tongues touched, I bursted out laughing, blowing air out of my nose into her face. Her tongue felt so wet that it made me envision my tongue to feel like SpongeBob from that episode, where he visits Sandy for the first time and he's on the brink of death, desperate for water. I immediately felt embarrassed and sorry for ruining the mood. I apologize for being childish and stupid. We tried to save the situation, but I got soft and she lost interest as she was disappointed. Totally get that. (laughs) After that, silence was tr- was trenched by disappointment and embarrassment. Thankfully, 10 minutes later, I was able to get the mood back on and make up for it. I gave everything I had. I used every trick in the book and managed to take her to the promised land and preserved some oh, dignity my for my bloodlust. Okay. <laughs> What's the, I gotta be honest, dude. Uh, the SpongeBob thing is like the least <laughs> the embarrassing least, yeah. thing going on. Oh yeah. my god! Come on, dude. Holy crap! You, you're talking to a bunch of internet strangers. I know. Right. You're allowed to say whatever you want. Like, why are you? It didn't need to be that. Did not. Yeah, need to I be took that. her to the promised land. Having something stupid come up in the middle of that and like laughing—that's the joie de vivre. That's yeah. like that's wow. that's the joy of in like an intimacy. And then it's like, okay, ten minutes later, yeah, have have a laugh. Be like, right. ah, then you get back to it. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. this isn't that 
bad. I feel like this is an easy recovery versus some of the other things that have come up based oh, yeah. on Reddit. Yeah, the SpongeBob's a sweet thing. Like they know each other very well. Yeah. They're able to laugh about that. You just had a little bit too much. You know, we've all been there too. Yeah, yeah he's high. Like yeah. that's also also that aspect. No, but then he sobered up and wrote this. Right. That, that was the mistake. <laughs> that was I'm like, mistake. I'm judging mistake. you for this, <laughs> yeah. man. Come on, don't say I'm ready to make my ancestors proud. What? Because that also that's that's oh. that's weird on several Still levels. Don't bring dead people into this. Yeah. Your yeah. ancestors are like, no man, we are we're not part They're of like, this. Like we actually <laughs> actually <laughs> downvote. Some comments. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? There's six episodes. No. But I'll read it. <laughs> Someone typed out the whole song. Oh, who comes to my mind after you smoke some weed, SpongeBob SquarePants, a yellow and uh, porous <laughs> blocker is he, SpongeBob SquarePants. If sex sexy escapades be something you wish, SpongeBob SquarePants, then don't blow air in her face and gasp like a fish. Uh, OP responded and said, made my day. That's oh, crafty. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's that's crafty. Good. Lastly, lastly, someone said, you mean sexy time got in the way of SpongeBob time? Mm. The True. nerve of some people. Mm. Uh, OP said, of course, how could I be so foolish? Yeah, I can think of, uh, I think almost everything could be worse than that moment. Yeah. Uh, that, that, was, that was not that bad. No. Yeah. Honestly, what's worse for me now is the ancestor comment. And yeah. now that we've really started thinking about it, I'm envisioning like Mulan, like where they're oh. all floating around the room. and. I think that's what I'm gonna envision the next time because mm. like it's like, oh hi Grandma Ellen. Like why did he have to do that to us? Right. To me. <laughs> to me. That's awful. Yeah, this oh. guy ruined my life. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> this episode of Reddit Stories is brought to you by Factor Foods. Look, if you want to eat healthy and also uh, save time and have a much more convenient schedule, Factor Foods is right for you. These dietitian approved, chef crafted meals are delicious and they are ready in just two minutes. They're delivered straight to your door. Uh, and what's great is they have so many options. You have over 35 options to choose from every week. Those include Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, there's breakfast options, lunch options, dinner options, and, and the food's good, man. Like, I, I love Factor. I've used it a lot over, my, over the course of the past few years. They've got pancakes, smoothies, anything you could ever dream of, they've got it, and it's easy to make, and you're gonna feel good at the same time. Um, and you'll probably get super buff. I can't say that for sure, but like, I don't know. Anyways, all right, what are you waiting for? Get started today and get after your goals. Head to factormeals.com slash pitreddit50 and use code pitreddit50 to get 50% off. That's code pitreddit50 at factormeals.com slash pitreddit50 to get 50% off. Back to the show. Today I f***ed up by not realizing our initials made our cake topper inappropriate. Oh. Okay. I will be getting married in October of 2023 to my fiance of nine years. In these nine years, I have never really put together how our initials look, mine being C and his being M. I ordered a very pretty cake topper a few weeks ago with our initials. It came in and I looked at it with excitement and hadn't shown anyone but my fiance. Today, my father stopped in for a visit and I began to show him stuff I bought for the wedding. I held the cake topper and he gave me a puzzled look and asked, what does it say? <laughs> I was confused as to how it wasn't obvious. Then it sparked me uh, to look at it differently. The cake topper says C heart M, except the heart is the shape size as the letters. The heart is also not a traditional shape, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. making it look like it says Oh, yeah. <laughs> I showed this to my father in full confidence. I ordered a cake topper that just says come. Not even my fiance caught it. <laughs> my life. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Hey. I, I think it's awesome. I, like I think it's it. pretty cool. Yeah. I like, it. like, dude, check it out. Come. <laughs> Want a slice of the cake? <laughs> <laughs> dude, <laughs> cake. <laughs> Who wants it? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm down for it, whatever. Yeah, who cares? Keep it interesting. Yeah, it's still the, the letters, you know, it's still, you're not yeah. breaking any rules. Yeah, it's cute. I it's like still it. It's a little thing. Yeah, uh, and that's, honestly, there's there's worse possible combinations, so, you know, that's yeah. not so bad. I'm on board. Yeah. yeah. Now, Thanks. I'm going through, like, who should I not marry so that nothing can go mm. wrong there? Just someone else with the, uh, with the, or wait. Yeah, I don't think there's a three letter word that starts with T that's really bad. Don't put it in the comments. 
I did break up with someone over their last name once. <gasps> yeah. Well, it's the last name. I'm sorry, anyone who has it, but it was Hyman. Oh. And I see. just, I he's super nice guy, but like every time it was like, you, you, you start to think Morgan Hyman. I just, I couldn't do it. I'm like, it can't be me. It can't be me. I wow. can't have that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He's engaged now. So oh, good for him. That's great. Yeah, he, he found love. Oh. So, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Hopefully yeah. they go with her last name. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like it's like uh, <laughs> if I went by Tommy Prostate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, it's Tommy Prostate. Okay. Yeah. He, 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 he's at a coffee shop and he's just like, "Hey, I'm Jeff Hyman." She's like, "I'm Jenny Testicles." <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Some comments here. Carefully cut the C and the M and swap them. It's an easy maneuver commonly known as the <laughs> swap. <laughs> nice. I once wrote cum <laughs> instead of cupcake once. Cool. What? <laughs> awesome, dude. I wish it had one upvote. It only, it is 906. I wish it had one. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. One of Sweden's biggest property owners for hospitals decided to skip sending out Christmas cards one year and instead took out an ad in the paper. The company is called Locum. And this is the result. It's low cum, but with the heart as the O, it looks like I heart c That's That's awesome. All right. I well, like it. that's it. That's that story. <laughs> nice. Good time. I hope they kept big, it. Big fan. All right. Here's our next story. Am I the asshole for eating my pregnant wife's leftovers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. She's pregnant. She's pregnant. I also just think uh, eating anyone's leftovers is oh, it's, it's a douchey move. I'm fighting if you eat my leftovers. My wife and I have been together for five years now, and during this time we have come to an agreement that any leftovers we take home from a restaurant belong to that person for the next 36 hours. After that, it's fair game. Mm. Oh, mm. so they have an agreement. Okay. They have some after 36 hours, fair game. My wife just hit nine weeks into her pregnancy. She's in the high risk category and has been pretty much put to bed rest by the doctors. Since she's in her first trimester, she's nauseous all the time and has been constantly puking her guts out daily. About a week ago, she was actually feeling really good, was moving around, so we decided to go out and eat at our local steakhouse. We got there, ordered our food, and the second she got the food, I guess the smell of it just didn't agree with her stomach because she put it to the side. We agreed to take it to go since we didn't want to just waste an entire meal. The next couple of days, she's back in bed, barely eating since nothing was agreeing with her stomach until last night. She was back in a good mood and got excited about eating her steak, mashed potatoes, and veggies. I told her I ate it since it's been more than 36 hours, and I was really wanting some, some more steak. She just broke down crying, telling me how she's pregnant, she can't control how her body reacts to different foods, how I'm selfish and don't really care about her well-being. <laughs> I offered to go back to the restaurant and get her a new steak, but she just got more upset and said that's not the point. Grabbed a spoon, some applesauce, and went back into bed to eat to eat it and watch some TV. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah. I'll walk it back a little. Not the asshole. Mm. They have ground rules. It is after the 36 hours, but could he have been a little more considerate and asked? Yeah. 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 Yeah, she is yeah. she is bedridden right now. Right. It's like she, it's like all right, the rules Yeah. the rules apply in general, but special circumstances call for exactly. adjustments. Exactly. I think even if you have that rule, it's like after the 36 hours it's still like, all right, it's been 36 hours. Can I I'm have it? Eat this. Yeah, a courtesy. Right. Like it's like that's, you know. Well, especially pregnant now. Like Right. That added context of like mm -hmm. she's throwing up all the time, nauseous, mm -hmm. bedridden, emotional, hormones are going crazy, right. and it's just like that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Right. And yeah, all you had to do is ask. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's tough. Because it's not like she was out, out of the house. No. Something. It's right. Like she's right there. You could yeah. just, you could literally just be like, "Hey, steak." Yeah. That's all you had to do. <laughs> Oh, poor thing. Uh, the verdict was oh. no assholes here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, some comments. Man, just apologize and go get her the steak and some flowers. Pregnancies can be hard, and it really can make women very emotional. As men, we can't possibly understand what that is like to go through. You're going to have to cut her some slack here. Furthermore, it doesn't matter who is right or wrong here. That isn't what a marriage is or should be about. Okay. You are one unit. Keeping score is not going to lead to anything good. 
No one's the asshole. Go take care of your pregnant wife. Get her some flowers. Buy her that steak. Rub her feet. Say say how sorry you are. Sixteen thousand upvotes. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the answer. Well done. Yeah, yeah. well love done. That. Nailed yeah, it. Well that. done. Going with you're the asshole belongs to that person for the next 36 hours. After that, it's free game. I like that rule. Reasonable, fair, keeps shit from sitting in the fridge for weeks. My pregnant wife, game suspended due to pregnancy. <laughs> Sorry, dude, that rule yeah. is not enforceable for the next seven months. Yeah. Uh, 6,000 upvotes. Uh, soft, you're the asshole. The game changes when there are health concerns and pregnancy. It would have taken you all of two minutes to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it was easy. And like nine weeks, high risk. She's bedridden at nine weeks. Like. I feel like that, it must be really intense. Yeah. And so you almost should be going above and beyond to make sure she's catered to. Right. Like that psychologically and like emotionally for her, she's going through this huge change and she's bedridden right. and super sick. Like you gotta be a good partner and like go the extra length to ensure right. she's good and taken care of. And he's, he could have fully just gotten any other food. Like right. he could order food, he could go, go yeah. get something. It's just like yeah, he, he could have ordered himself another steak if he wanted more. Steak. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, uh, but just it, this feels just like a like a doofus guy kind of yep. slip up moment mm -hmm. where it's just like oh no, I'm sorry, I love you. There's also an insane <laughs> track record of like any "Am I the asshole" written from a guy, and it has to do with his wife and food. Mm -hmm. It's like it's always it's always like, dude, dude, you're probably you're probably in the wrong. Yeah, here. yeah. Like it's it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, moving on. Yeah. Here we go. Am I the asshole for not just dropping it and putting a blanket veto on all TV show names for our son? Okay. Hmm. Me and my wife are having our first kid soon, and no, it is going to be a boy. It's been hard to come to an agreement on names. She is very firm on picking a name that we both agree on, but we pretty much have opposite tastes. I have a very, very basic and common first name, which I like, so I gravitate towards simple and classic names like James, William, and Daniel. She likes not that. She suggested the name Dean the other day, and I was considering it, until I found out she picked it because it was the name of her teen TV crush. She dug in her heels and insisted that she just liked the name and wasn't going to name her kid after the character, and watching an old episode of the show just reminded her of the name. I'm like, that is exactly what naming your kid after a TV character means. <laughs> so I said, how about this? I'm going to give you a preemptive blanket veto on TV show names. I don't want to hear suggestions for a little Zuko or Sherlock or anything like that. And literally any other name is on the table. Is that fair? And she said, no. That is not fair, and I'm being a dick and putting words in her mouth. My position is that if you're gonna try to pick a TV name for your own kid, at least own up to it and admit it's a TV name. I'm more annoyed at the transparent denial at this point than the fact that she suggested it in the first place. Um, well, I got bad news for him. Um, James, William, and Daniel are all in TV shows. Yeah. Yep, I was just about to say, uh, every name has been in a TV show, probably. Yeah. Come on. Fresh so. Prince. There's William. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they couldn't use it again after that. Can't they use it again. It never, yeah. never. Um, yeah, uh, strange. I mean, her 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 reasoning is fine. Yeah. Right. It's like, oh yeah, that was a name of, on a TV show. It sounded cool. Yeah. Dean's also in that category of normal names for me. Yeah. It is. Dean is a normal it's short. name. Yeah. Yeah. He is clearly jealous about the crush thing. <laughs> little, like, in little insecure. A little insecure. Yeah. Cause yeah. he's like, Oh, you, you you liked him when you were young? What about me? <laughs> Fine, we can name him a TV name. Yeah. All right, meet our son, Columbo. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's better than like an ex-girlfriend. Oh, we've yeah. We've had those oh. stories. We've had those stories too. Where it's like an ex-girlfriend or an ex-fiance that's passed and mm. like there's stories like that. So it's like a fictional character from a show. It's better. It's totally fine. It's like, yeah. there's only so many names out there. And so many people name their kids after just like, uh, this name sounds good. Yeah. Like, they, a lot of names don't have meaning. Like, no. I don't think my name had meaning. I think it was just like, Shane. All right. Like it. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Right. Sounds good. She could have positioned it like, I want to name him after this, like, school dean that I love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just know. Just lied. Just lied. Just lied. A little white lie. Um, some comments here. James and his giant peach 
William, Willy Wonka, yep. and Daniel, Danny Turner, would all tell you how stupid this idea is, and those are just the first few I thought of off the top of my head. You're the asshole. Can you name a single name that hasn't been used in TV or movies? Info, someone else said, Info. Did she get the name Dean from Gilmore Girls? Because if so, I wouldn't name my child after him either. Opie said, You're weirdly close. It's Dean from Supernatural. That's what I was thinking, because he is hot. <laughs> yeah. I knew. I knew immediately, but you know. <laughs> I like uh, that it has 69 upvotes. Our producer made, it, made sure to put in noise. Next noise. Time. Noise. Oh, yeah. uh, so this original comment was deleted, but OP said, you know, weirdly, this comment actually helped me because my knee-jerk reaction was, this guy, he can't tell me what my own thoughts and actions would be. But then I realized that's pretty much what I've been doing, and my wife has probably been, been thinking, this guy, he can't tell me uh, what name was more than just a name in my own head about me. And I am mad at her for digging in her heels, but then what have I been doing for the last half hour? And with a bunch <laughs> of internet randos, no offense. <laughs> so actually, yeah, I will apologize for being an ass when she gets home. Dean is still not going to be the name. I know, I was already not 100% on it before this whole bout of nonsense. And now it feels tainted by the drama on top of that, but maybe my olive branch can be me being more compromising on the names she likes. She has a lot of Irish names on her list uh, that sound like common names, but have weird, for here, spellings. If we can find one that sounds common enough and is at least spelled like it sounds so that everyone he meets doesn't say it wrong, that might work. 311 upvotes. Good okay, bit. some self-awareness there. I yeah. like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, he kind of came back around. Um, uh, you know, I was going to say in the original story, there's he's the asshole for this story, but yeah. he's another one who fits into the category of an asshole for how he wrote it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not that serious. And, like, they're already in agreement that, like, it's got to be a mutual decision. So at least they have that going for them. But, like, to just be like... Ah, all TVs. It's like yeah. that's you got to take it case by case, dude. Right. Yeah. That's that's weird. that's so extreme. Yeah. Also, Sherlock is like that's... he knows it's from a book first, right? <laughs> Don't let him know. Don't tell him. I like that. Uh, Reddit gave him some life lessons. Mm. It's like, hey, call your therapist. Cancel. Just go on Reddit. <laughs> Just go on Reddit. <laughs> You'll learn everything about your life on there. Apparently. Final story here. This comes from relationship advice. The title is. My girlfriend smells. Oh. Uh, it's a 24-year-old woman uh, writing about a 24-year-old woman. Uh, my girlfriend and I uh, made it official and started telling family and friends we're dating. The first time we cuddled, she smelled like dog poop. I didn't want to put my nose near her, and that's the only thing I could think about being close to her. I pushed it aside. We made plans on the fly that night, and I didn't think too much of it. She probably didn't get the chance to shower before coming over and forgot to brush her teeth. I regretfully overlooked it completely. Today we watched a movie and cuddled. The smell wasn't as intense, but still bad. It didn't smell like dog poop this time, but as if she wore a dirty beanie for three days straight and didn't wash her hair after. Mm -hmm. I was so disappointed because I was planning to kiss her tonight and make a move, but couldn't pull myself to because of the unclean smell. What do I say to her? I really like her, and I couldn't break up with her because we just made it official. She's kind, caring, understanding, funny, and a joy to be around. I don't want to hurt her feelings, and I definitely don't want to break up with her. I see a future together, but I need something to change. Any words of advice? Got a big edit here, bigger than the original post. A lot of people seem confused, so I'll clear it up a little bit. We've hung out a lot the last few weeks, three times a week, and I drive in my car everywhere we go. We've hugged a lot, and I never smelled her in any of those moments until we were up close and personal. The only times I ever smelled it were those two times I put my head on hers. A lot of you mentioned it could be her diet, her hair, her shower habits, her mental health getting the better of her and being unhygienic, her pets, her shower slash shampoo slash body wash products, or new piercings. She has diagnosed uh, gastroenteritis and something else with her gut. So she has severe digest digestive issues that cause chronic pain and can't eat certain foods and has a hard time eating in general. This also leads to mental illnesses, but I don't think it's a lack of shower. I think it could be her hair and maybe not washing it as often, which makes sense because she has very, very short hair. She has two older dogs, but when I've been at her house a few times and nothing suspicious came up, uh, she's not a dirty person and she takes care of herself. She has ear piercings that are healing, so maybe that too. 
So there's probably a lot of contributing factors, eating habits, living with pets, digestion issues, and maybe she's not washing her hair a lot, or new healing ear piercings. Uh, it's a sensitive topic, and I'm taking her out later today and mentioning something. I'm going to say I'm allergic to her hair shampoo and ask her to please change it. She's very kind and understanding, so yes, the conversation will be embarrassing and, and uncomfortable, but I will support her the best I can and be understanding and accommodating as much as she has with me. Then I guess we'll see what goes on from there. Thank you for the positive comments. I know this isn't uncommon in partners, and after reading your advice, I know how to address it. Much appreciated. Um, so wait, is the the saying she's allergic to her shampoo, that's a lie? Yeah. yeah. She's going to try to like do it case by case? Oh my gosh. You're building up a million lies then if it's not I the hair. I know. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's not going to work. She no. needs to... I, I mean, it's hard because if you're going to really be like, yeah. it's like, hey, baby, you're a little stinky kind of all the time. Then it's like, <laughs> if, I w if I receive that information, then it would be very hard not to think about all the time I'm with my partner and I stink. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, if your partner says, hey, you're stinky right now, then you know that they would tell you when you're stinky. Right. So you don't have to yeah. think about that. Right. I'm just confused. Like, is it the hair or is it actually like breath and like gastro oh. like reflux type things because like if she's got extreme like GERD problems or gastroenteritis it's like that sphincter could not be working correctly and like the bile you could be smelling stomach bile is what you're smelling so it's confusing for me how it's like it's hair but like is it breath or piercings because then I start thinking tonsil stones mm. have you heard about those mm -hmm. I learned about them about a year ago and I've been traumatized ever since I haven't heard about tonsil stones. Do I want to hear about tonsil stones? I have a mining tool. I got a, like a little, it's like a pick on it because I was so scared about them. So I check and I got one out once and they stink. Yeah. Like they are horrendously smelling. Damn. Yeah. So would I know if I have one? Yeah, just look at your tonsils later. You can use your phone flashlight and kind of, uh, and. But it'll be noticeable. You should notice, yeah. Okay. There's worse things, and there's an easy way to just be like, hey, like, you know, I know you have stomach problems. Your breath is kind of bad. Like, it might be something to talk to your doctor about. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so slime. scary. I've never, yeah. I luckily, I don't have a great sense of smell. Mm. So I've luckily never had this situation where I've had to tell anyone because I've never really noticed it or yeah. been bothered. I'm also just unbothered by it. Yeah. Um, at the gym, sometimes I notice, like, someone will, ha will it'll be like, damn, that's intense. <laughs> but I just don't care that much. No. Um, but if it's your partner and you're yeah. cuddling, you're trying to relax, yeah. I get that. But I would be mortified to have to tell someone. It's very I'd feel so bad. It's rough because it's new. Mm -hmm. if it that's was what's like, hard. If it was, like, yeah. four years in, you could be like, hey, babe, get a little stinky. You Let's smell. figure it out. Yeah. Because yeah. then it's like, we're together. You know, we're in this together. Right. right? But and this is like brand new. So it's like, this is the foundation of this relationship. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. I don't know if there's like a clear answer besides like, just talk about it. It's all, the answer to everything is kind of like, talk about it. Yeah. But, but you do wonder like, is the line the better answer now versus, you know, honesty, best policy? Because can you move forward together even after this? Exactly. Like, is exactly. she going to be too embarrassed? Right. And I don't know. I'm tussling with this one. This one's hard. Um, some comments, uh, a comment. I'm a bit confused. Did you know about the odor issue before making her your girlfriend? Not at all. We hung out more than a handful of times and didn't smell anything. I didn't notice it in my car or for a quick hug. I felt uncomfortable with the smell when she was half laying on me and I put my chin on her hair. Edit, I wanted to add, she was in my car every time I saw her and a lot of brief hugs before and after hanging out. So I was close to her often, but I didn't smell it until I was uh, really up close. Hmm. Interesting. Got an update. Okay. Oh, I'm scared. I have to break up with her. <gasps> what, is she eating dog poop? Today was the worst she ever smelled. I never smelled it until my nose was in her hair until today. I couldn't be in the car with her and the movie we went to sucked because it was all I could smell and think about. I didn't even take time to say goodbye just got out of the car, gave her a respectful hug, and left immediately. She looked depressed and disappointed pulling out of the driveway. I can't look at her the same. Y'all, this is so bad, and I feel so bad for her. I have secondhand embarrassment for her. I wish things could have worked out. I really liked her. Gonna break up with her tonight. I know it's an asshole move, but I don't think I can tell her, tell her the real reason. 
I'm just going to blame it on the stress I'm going through because life is shit right now, even without my girlfriend in the picture. Ugh, I wish I didn't put myself in this situation. It's funny in hindsight, but geez, I'm over it. Going to laugh and cry on the down low with my friends over the next few days. Uh, dude, come on. Like, if you're breaking up with her, tell her that's uh, stinky. This is not the update I wanted. No. Yeah. I, yeah. I just think, like, they were saying, like, they really cared about this person. Like, yeah. you should tell them. Um, but there's another update. Oh. oh? Okay. So okay. We'll see what's up. To sum up my last post, I said my ex girlfriend stunk of poop and I looked past it the first couple of times, but I broke up with her after the third. I didn't notice her smell the many times we hung out, sat in my car, or the hugs we had. I smelled poop from her when my head was on hers and my nose was close to her hair. I was really immature and broke up with her an hour after I dropped her off from our movie date, probably 10 minutes after I posted my last update. So she did break up with her. Mm -hmm. Okay. I felt and still feel so guilty not telling her. I saw my therapist yesterday and after sobbing to her about my ex-girlfriend and my life status right now, 25 days from being homeless and the other f***ed up things we talk about weekly, mm. she helped me realize I need to open up a conversation with my ex. I wrote out a few letters and put one in her mailbox last night. I explained in detail what she smelled like, where I smelled it, and what times I smelled her so she knows how she smells now. I also told her I missed her and that I didn't think my actions through. I told her why I broke things off and my thought process through it. I don't want to attribute mental health to this. Having PTSD or any disorder is not an excuse to be an asshole. But the expectations of sex, kissing, or even holding hands puts my body into survival mode. I'm not going to write out everything what's wrong with me here, but I broke up with her because of the smell. It was the straw that broke the camel's back. I wrote her a letter and put it in her mailbox last night. First thing this morning, she messaged me and said we needed to talk. We talked it out and she said she's going to find a way to get rid of the smell. She forgave me and we're going to be friends in the meantime while I work through my PTSD. All right, well, okay. Yeah, this is go. great. Way that's to go, great therapist. Yeah. 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 And that's that's brave. Like she she did that's it. That's huge. She did it. Yeah. She like, did it. She got through it. It sounds like she's going through a lot. Clearly, um, yeah. Cool of them to not play. Like I don't want to attribute this to my mental health, but you know, like, um, but she she handled it. She did the right thing. And I know, like in stressful situations, you don't want to make those tough decisions of right. like, yeah. oh, I can't communicate this right now. I'm yeah. going through a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But she did it. That's great. Um, hopefully they get this worked out. I mean, yeah. her, so her partner had no idea. Yeah. Do, it sounds like, yeah, no idea. Also, way to go to the, the person who got broken up with yeah. to receive the information yeah. and to be like, thank you for telling me we can be friends. Like, what a... Yeah. yeah. Nice, good. Yeah. Right. And I mean, look, I, these types of situations are so scary, but they can be the way that a, a relationship kind of levels up because that's such True. extreme communication. Yes. It's so vulnerable, and it's like, okay, sweet. So I smelled like shit, and you still want to be with me. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like there's something kind of sweet about that. Yeah, yeah, look oh, on the bright yeah. side. I think this is great. Like as someone that I struggle personally with confrontation, so I get how like that conversation initially, it would have been hard. It would have been awkward. And so I think the letter idea is great. Like the fact you did the letter that took guts. Mm -hmm. You didn't know the outcome from that. So mm -hmm. that is great. And like, I think this is like the perfect resolution. Like she knows now, like who knows her apartment water could be contaminated with sewage. We don't know what's going on. Yeah, man. So now we can actually work to address it and you don't lose someone you care about. Right. I'm not, I'm not a confrontational person. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad at it. I have to say, I, I think uh, if I was in this person's shoes, I could see myself being similar. You yeah. know, like I, I have to be honest there. Um, but I think it is great to let someone know if it's something like this, so that even if you're going to go through with the breakup, mm -hmm. right? Just letting them know so they can they can be aware and change it, or right? Yeah. Address it. I think hygiene, especially because like not only is this bleeding into her relationship, but this could affect her professionally, which mm -hmm. then could affect her personally, right. and like. There's so many domino effects that this one little issue could right. cause. So I think it's it's definitely fair. Yeah. Yeah. Happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's all of them. Uh, Morgan, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. This was a really fun assortment. Mm -hmm. I loved uh, it. Good one. A good mix of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tommy, as always, thank you. Hey, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It was a blast. Great. Um, well, people can find you at Two Hot Takes, right? Two Hot Takes on everything. Our episode should be out by now. 
So check that out. That was a lot of fun. You had you had some really solid takes on those. And I, I feel like I traumatized you a little too. No, no. Okay. I saw him crying earlier. Is that I why? Know. He, I know. He, yeah. <laughs> Morgan's here and I'm like, ah! Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no! Oh! Yeah. Uh, no, they were some crazy stories. They were. These ones are a little more goofy. You, we had this some. This was nice. Yeah, this was a nice little reprieve from yeah. that. So watch that one, then watch this one to kind of like. Yes. Yes, yeah. honestly. Let it loose. Well, you've already watched this Yeah, one, so maybe watching. take a breather. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, so, forget everything. Yeah. Go back. Um, Give it some time. Yeah. Give it some time before yeah. you jump in on that. Um, but, but check out Two Hot Takes. It's a great show. Um, and uh, yeah, you're always welcome here. Thank you. you want. Come back anytime. Great. Yeah. Cool. And Tommy, you're also welcome here. Really? Yeah, you did. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> really? Um, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Let us know what other themes, categories, subreddits you want us to cover. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.